Mr. Casals, yeah. Taking us home, huh? Well, here we are. We're in the groove, you know. We're in the groove. This groove between Christmas and New Year's, this time of reflection, this time of remembering, this time of reaching out, this time of tears, this time of laughter, this time of longing, this time of holding together. bird stopped singing as I heard a voice calling. Sweet spirit rising. I heard you, Justine. Sweet spirit rising. This week we come up with number 60, Jai, articulating boundaries. You know, we got to remember that. You know, we have boundaries, but it's not just about thinking what our boundaries is. We got to speak up, man. Somebody's uh, crossing your boundaries. Put your foot down. That's not what it's about at this time in life, huh? Let people cross your boundaries. That's not what it's about. But you know what? We have our boundaries crossed all the time with our air pollution, government, and all that stuff. So we got to speak up, and we got to speak up and make the changes that are necessary. And where is it wonderful to go to for sage advice but to the I Ching, right? The wisdom, number 60, Articulating boundaries in number 60 says, you've reached an intersection in time, not space. Boundaries must be firmly stated, recognized, and respected. Keep that in mind, okay? Setting boundaries is of utmost importance at this time. Your primal self that feeds the soul needs boundaries in order to operate in the most efficient, the most loving, and the most healthful way. Without clear boundaries, all you know, all you love, can fall into chaos. And all you've worked for and cared for will hit the fan. Woo! And we know what that's like. <laughs> whether expenditures of energy, whether it could be energy, could be money, could be emotions, it is beneficial at this time to set limitations. It's not that your potential is limited. You see, it's, you are without limits, really. But the energy and the effort you expend to get there does have limits. And these limits are going to be recognized. That is the benefit now. See what your limits are. Your physical, your spiritual, your emotional energy are a sacred gift. This comes from the universe, and it is the wise one who does not squander this gift. If you do, it would be the ultimate disrespect for yourself and for all of your hard-earned place, that place within, that soul space, in caring for yourself and ultimately your soul's journey by setting correct boundaries in combination with acts of service, right? Got that? Acts of service, 
important right now, you're going to come into having really powerful and important boundaries, right? Knowing and honoring your limits brings success in great measure. Moving outside your inner truth will leave you wanting and fearful. Yeah. That's where you say, man, I'm feeling afraid. That's because you've, you've walked beyond where you, where you should be. <laughs> you know, it's about finding what that boundary is. And there's so much room. You know, we don't have to fake it. That old thing, fake it till you make it. I'm not buying it. Man, we got to be there. We got to be home. We got to be present. The limits or boundaries that you've set right now, you got to think it through. They should not be punitive. They should not be severe. Love within your present abilities and plan projects that reflect where your skills and experience lie, as where you are right now. Okay. Set financial limitations according to your present means. Be of service to others, but know and respect your own needs first. Yeah. Your dreams, oh man, your dreams. Oh. Here we go, huh? Dream on. You see, your dreams right now, the dreams that you have if you're asleep or if you're awake, that's dreaming. These are imaginings. These are messages of possibilities, you see. If you don't have dreams or do not honor their presence, you won't know when dreams come true. That would be a pity to miss that kind of joy, that fulfillment, that satisfaction. As you work, as you live, and as you love within your capacity, within your dreams, these things are on their own without you prodding them. They're going to grow, they're going to manifest, as will love, and depth of feeling that you have desired. In your creation, in your spiritual life, as you move to express your deepest self-knowing, your limitations will be as important as the medium that you chose to work in. You know, dig that. What are you going to do? You're going to paint? You're going to speak? You're going to dance? You're going to be a storyteller? Yeah. These considerations are elemental. This is the basics, man. This is the basics. And man, isn't this a time to go back to basics to achieve optimum physical, mental, and spiritual wellness? This benefit will be now is to take a really honest assessment of your own gifts, the personal gifts that you have, and of your limitations, the ego. Hmm. Ego would give you the message that you do not want to move quickly and give beyond measure or you'll miss the boat, right? It's telling you to move quickly. Don't do that. Telling you to give beyond measure. Don't do that. Or you will be left grasping at air. You see, this is an inappropriate message from the ego. It's telling you to make those moves. See, the universal laws say intone the opposite. If you move steadily towards your goal, Keeping your boundaries firm, when you do arrive at your destination, you're going to be strong and able to recognize and receive the rewards earned through compassion, through correctness, through loving kindness, through commitment, and steady, considered efforts. Set limits, even in limitation. Strive. Do not underestimate your capabilities, okay? See that how that balance is, right? You have limitations, but don't underestimate your, your, your capabilities. Because for the most part, you're better than you've told yourself you are. If that's the case, recognize it and break beyond confining self-restrictions, doubts, fear that want to play it safe. This is not the time to play it safe. If this is you, then breaking out of self-restricting boundaries should be done with an awareness of not going too far in the opposite extreme. Be outrageous and be courageous. Mm -hmm. Let's all say that together. Be outrageous and be courageous. That feels good, huh? Be moderate in your moderation. 
play, love, laugh, sing, dance, eat well, eat clean, be compassionate to all sentient beings, honor your family, honor your friends, and give love and support to those less fortunate than you, all within your known limits. See? Don't stretch too far. Body, mind, and spirit work in harmony. You will achieve the benefits that you've wanted by not overusing your body's resources. If you do, it, you know, sometimes it can be consuming toxic food or getting chemicals into your diet. Come to recognize when negative thoughts or practices negatively impacts the earth's body as well as your own. Feed well, cleanse your body, cleanse your mind, cleanse your spirit, so that you can be of good and proper caretakers of this temporary gift, the miraculous human body. You know, we only got this monad for a short blink of a bloody eye, man. Similarly, you will benefit from feeding the emerging new earth. I right, got that? The emerging new earth. With the love and nutrients that keep you from harm and keep her from harm and allow all the tribes, all the communities to live here in vast happiness and goodness. And I do believe that's what's coming. This is your responsibility because you are here and that makes you wear a badge. And that badge says, I am a caretaker of the earth. Man, I don't care. You rich, you poor, you know... <laughs> You, you know, in whatever position you're in in the world, you are a caretaker of the earth. Wear that badge proudly, you see. This is payback. You've got to give back for all the blessings that you've received in this life path. But again, what you give back should be within boundaries. We are at a tipping point on the planet, and we are each a reflection of the situation of this time. The timing of this hexagram is a poignant message for your family, for your tribes, and for yourself. Hear the voice of Gaia. Hear the wind moving through the trees. Hear the sounds of the birds. Hear the moving water. Listen. Listen with your heart and listen with your body, not with your mind. Relieve yourself from the pain of judgment, okay? Relieve yourself from the pain of doubting yourself. Honor yourself first, and then with a loving hand, reach out to all your relationships with kindness, with compassion, with integrity. Progress will be accelerated by moving away from and with consideration of letting go of the people. <laughs> Let go of those people, let go of those situations that no longer serve you, and that can be like tearing the scab off. But that's where bravery comes in, that's where courageous comes in. In doing this, look to who you might be holding in an unstated form of bondage. Look at that. You might have felt you are, but dig, who are you holding in bondage? Let them be free, because you're imprisoned just like they are, right? Just let them go. Don't hold them. Don't be bargaining for their life. Don't be bargaining for their love. Let them go. If you're unsure or you fear loss, that what is yours is going to go away. Man, know that if you do let go, what is yours, it's going to return, and it will be cleaner, It'll be refreshed, and it will sit in harmony with your goals. Oh, yeah, we got to be free. What's not yours? When you let it go, it's going to set you free. This is where love and friendship can reside easily. Be the love that you desire as you become a beacon of stillness and peace. Let this be your service and your teaching to the tribe, and to your fellow pilgrims on this road less traveled. This is the soul's journey. Yeah, this is what we're all going to do, man. We're on this by ourselves, but we also have fellows that we will find on this road less traveled. Reach out, take the hand of the children, take the hand of your friends, take the hand of your lovers, and tell, walk on, man, walk on with your head raised high.
the birds stop singing. As I hear a voice calling, sweet spirit rising. If you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm publishing a book called The New Earth I Ching, and I'm asking for help to get it published. You'll see some uh, text about it where you can donate. And we're giving, uh, giving you a book and lots of stuff. So if you, if you can donate, please do, because we're getting to that place where we're, it's in the countdown now, and I need you. I need you because I, I want this out by February next year. So I send you all the love that I could possibly muster down here at the 20th parallel. And I'm telling you that love is in the air, success is in the air, abundance is in the air. All you got to do is what? Breathe. That's right. Do your breathing. And as we say down here in uh, Yucatan, we quote the great Mayan, Teachers who tell us in La Kesha Lakin, I am the other you. And man, if you've been listening to me, you know I like it that way. Yes, I do. You know how you can tell? You hear somebody's voice, you can tell they're smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling. Hey, man, if somebody loves you, let them love you. And if you love somebody, tell them. Don't play that game and say, oh, be patient, I'll be there. Just let them love you and let it in. You know, are you going to get hurt? Maybe, but probably not. Because you're going to get filled up with love. You're going to get filled up with abundance. You're going to get filled up with the knowing of who you are. And that is our authenticity. I say again, in La Kesha Lakin, I am the other you. Namaste, all you sweet souls who are listening. You know, I know some of your faces, but I want you to know if I don't know your face, I definitely feel you. Namaste, y'all. If any of you are listening that are here in Tulum, I just want you to know every Tuesday um, I, I give a meditation at uh, Ikal, the sweetest, rest, the sweetest hotel in town. It really is. It's on the beach. And it's uh, by donation. Uh, if you got it, give it. If you don't got it, show up anyway. And we gather 50, 60 strong, and we meditate together. And in that, we can make some changes for ourselves and for the earth. And that's where we're headed these days. Come together and make some changes. So if you can come 5.30 every Tuesday at a call in Tulum, the money goes to Comida para los Gentes. It's uh, food for the people. And uh, a portion of it goes to the kids in Tulum that are having a rough time with their families. Esquina. Para los niños. Hasta la vista, my friends.